welcome back to another My Damn Toys video. Today I have your NXT Stand and Deliver 2021 sort of reaction slash review. You know, in the NXT reviews, we typically don't break everything down, right? We don't go through every single thing and we don't break it down match by match like we do with the main roster. It's more of like, you know, I sit back, I enjoy the show, I collect my thoughts, and then I come on here in one breath and just kind of break it all down and just kind of give you my thoughts and opinions on everything that took place at the show. Overall, you know, NXT for the past year or so, I would say, I'd say since, you know, the pandemic, I'd say, you know, uh, while we've had really great matches and we've had some great moments here and there and Finn's been champion, you guys know I love Finn Balor. He's one of my favorite talents in the world and everything. I just feel like the crowd is really what brings NXT to the next level. And I feel like NXT has just been missing that oomph, if you will. Like, I feel like it was much more special. It was much better when crowds were there. Everything felt way more important. It was just a lot better show, in my opinion. So I feel like ever since the pandemic hit, I feel like NXT has been lacking a little bit, and it's not the talent's fault. I mean, don't get me wrong, I think the mid-card is a bit, like, shallow at the moment. Like, I feel like we got a lot of fresh faces, maybe not as much star power as it might have used to have, and I don't know. I just feel like NXT has kind of been in a drought. Like, overall, I just feel like the crowd gone has hurt them, and so I'm hoping that, you know, they can get back to... I know we've had a little bit of a crowd, but I'm talking about the full shows, you know, with intense crowd and everything. I'm hoping that WrestleMania will have a little bit of a, you know, like, I'm really looking forward to how the crowd reacts at WrestleMania, but this show, night one and night two, it was just like WrestleMania, you know, we had it split up in nights, we had night one and night two, I would say, I don't know, I feel like night two was better, I, I definitely liked night two better, even though night one had its bangers, you know, I thought Pete Dunne and Kushida did well, I thought that the gauntlet match was really fun, Walter and Tommaso Ciampa was pretty fun, and I thought the tag team match slapped pretty good, the women's championship match was okay, in my opinion, I didn't really catch Zoe Stark and Tony Storm, because I was on the pre-show, I didn't really catch that one, but night two, we of course had the kickoff show, didn't watch the kickoff show on either one, so you pretty much can just scratch those off, I uh, I didn't even know there was kickoff matches, I guess I just missed the memo, but on night two, you had the ladder match for the NXT Cruiserweight title, you had the Women's Tag Team Championship match, you had the North American title with Johnny Gargano taking on Bronson Reed, who won the gauntlet match, we had Karrion Cross and Finn, and then we had Kyle O'Reilly and Adam Cole, I mean, the, actually, the more I look at it, I feel like maybe they were pretty even, maybe, I, I don't know. Well, let's go ahead and dive in, man, first of all, Pete Dunn picking up the win over Kushida. I think that Kushida, again, we said it when he lost to Gargano. Where the hell does this man go from here now? You know, what? what is he supposed to do? I don't I don't know. I feel like, I don't feel like the main roster is his, his calling card because if he goes over to the main roster, he'll be eating the damn chicken noodle soup and catering in no time, man. They definitely won't give that guy the time of day. So I think, I don't know. I don't know what to expect from Kushida next, but it seems like every match that he gets in that's a big deal, he loses, and I don't think that's good for him. Bronson Reed looked like a monster in the gauntlet match. The gauntlet match was super duper fun. Great sequences. I honestly think that was my favorite match of night one. And I know Walter and Tomato Ciampa was also very fun. Walter looking dominant as ever. Over 700 days of a reign. He defeats Ciampa. Adds another notch on the belt right there. Really impressive victory for Walter. I'm thinking we gotta get Walter versus Cross, right? I mean for both championships. That's what I'm thinking in my brain. But at the same time, we'll get into the, you know, we'll get into the NXT Championship as well. That's just something that crossed my brain. But the tag team match was super fun. NXT Tag Team Wrestling is always excellent, just like AEW, man. They know how to tear that shit down. Raquel Gonzalez becoming the new women's champion over Io Shirai. I honestly, I don't know where this goes. I don't know if they're going to call Io Shirai up. I don't know if, you know, I don't know what they're thinking there, but I don't know if Raquel is quite ready. You know, it'll be interesting to see where she goes from here. I think she has gotten a lot better, so I get, I, I'm not going to fully judge her just yet until we see, you know, a little bit of more, you know, what she can do. I think Io is better, but but, uh, you know, it is what it is. We'll just see how Raquel Gonzalez goes there. But night number two, guys, the ladder match for me, the Cruiserweight Championship ladder match, the, you know, the Unify, whatever the hell you want to call that. I felt that it was kind of lackluster, man. I didn't really feel that it was that great. It kind of felt kind of sloppy. I mean, don't get me wrong. There were some cool moments here and there. Excellent moonsault off the top of the ladder by Jordan Devlin. It was just kind of like a, I don't know, it just didn't really, it didn't have me intrigued, I guess, that much. But Jordan Devlin does lose to Santos Escobar. So Santos Escobar is your Cruiserweight Champion. And, you know, we are getting his figure in Elite Series 87. So that's pretty excellent right there. Ember Moon and Shotzi 
Blackheart defeat The Way in Candice LeRae and Indy Hartwell to win the NXT Women's Tag Team Championships or to retain their championships, my bad. That one was okay. You know, it wasn't anything too out of the ordinary for me. Johnny Gargano defeating Bronson Reed. Now, this one I was kind of worried about. I'm not the biggest fan of Bronson Reed. I don't think he's bad, but uh, going one-on-one -on -one with Johnny, I like the little, you know, the little man versus the big man. I thought they told a great story. It was really excellent. It really picked up near the end. It was a very fun matchup. I thought that was pretty solid. You know, I thought it was, it, it kind of got sloppy at a couple moments, like Austin Theory uh, getting the near fall with Johnny, like pulling his foot up on the rope. I didn't really like that. It didn't really, it didn't look cohesive. Kind of got a little bit messy there, but you know, that is what it is. And then we had Karrion and Kroc. Okay, now we got to get into it, right? Everybody knows that my boy Finn Balor got defeated by Karrion Cross. all right? It's shitty. It's real shitty. Uh, I thought that this match was excellent. Finn Balor looked like a champion. He was beating the hell out of Cross, which is really weird. It seemed like Finn, I don't know about you, but it seemed like Finn was dominant the whole time, man. It seemed like Finn was beating the ish out of Karrion Cross, and then Karrion Cross just a couple moves here and there, and bam, Finn was dead. It was it was crazy. I, I don't know. I, I don't know what it is, man, but Karrion Cross is boring, man. I, I, I am not a fan of the guy. I wasn't a fan of him coming in. I mean, don't get me wrong. I hate that Finn lost. You guys know I love Finn Balor and everything, but Aaron Cross is just boring to me. It's just the way I feel. I, I hate it. I don't necessarily want to dislike him. He's just boring. I find his, like, I don't know. Nothing moves the needle about him for me. Like, okay, he has a cool entrance. That's fine. I just, I don't like his offense. I don't like what, I, I don't know. It's very weird. I'm just not a Karrion Cross fan. I don't know what to say, man. I don't think he's as bad as, you know, Trash Corbin or, or how I feel about Damian Priest. Damian Priest actually lifted a lot for me. When he had his feud with Finn Balor, he really elevated himself for me, but Karrion Cross is NXT champion. This now leaves me, where the hell does Finn Balor go? So you have a couple instances here. He could go back up to the main roster, which would probably be devastating for him. I feel like he's found, he's reinvented and found himself again in NXT. He could go after Walter's UK title. We could get that matchup that I want to see, that feud I want to see there for Finn Balor and Walter. That's a beautiful looking matchup that we could see. You know, Finn trying to knock off Walter's reign. He could set his sights on Johnny Gargano in the North American Championship again. I don't know. A lot of stuff going on, man. A lot of stuff going on. We don't know what is next for Finn Balor. I, I mean, he could go after the NXT title again. Maybe he's going to take a break here. But he lost Clint. Now, one thing that pissed me off again about the matchup is that Karrion Cross was getting hurt in the stomach, you know, in the ribs, in the liver, and just pounding, pounding, pounding. He took, like, multiple shots of the thing. He even took a coup de gras on that bitch, and he pretty much kicked out at, like, two. Like, straight up two. Not two and a half, not two and three quarters. He pretty Pretty much kicked out at two. It was one to kick out, like immediately, and he locked in the chokehold on Finn Balor. I was like, oh, okay, is this guy, what is What is this guy? Is this Brock fucking Lesnar? What is this bullshit? So I don't know about that, but I guess they want to book him as the monster. I, I'm not behind it, but whatever. I feel like NXT just dropped off another cliff, seeing uh, Finn Balor lose the NXT Championship. And then we get into our main event. Kyle O'Reilly and Adam Cole, really fun matchup, really intense promo. The promo before this was excellent. The Peacock Network censored the word asshole. I was like, bro, how do you expect me to Take it seriously. You're 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 censoring the word asshole. I mean, what is this? You know? I don't know about that. I thought that was pretty just lame. I'm trying to buy into your feud, and you won't even say asshole. Anyways, these two beat the hell out of each other. Epic spots, man. I mean, these guys just you could feel the passion. It went. I, I feel like it probably went a little too long. It was a blood feud. These guys do have you know an epic history, but 40 minutes, man. These guys went 40 minutes in 10 seconds, and it was every bit of enjoyable. I definitely enjoyed it. Uh, maybe it went a bit long, but I think the feud kind of calls for it. Maybe not in the first matchup, but overall, Kyle O'Reilly defeats Adam Cole, and I don't know where this leaves Adam Cole. Is Adam Cole going to go up to the main roster? Probably not a good idea. Not a good idea for him, but I don't know where he goes. You know, I feel like you're really limited in NXT because there's only so many things you can do. There's only so much talent and you constantly have new talent rotating in so it's a very, you know, sticky situation there but Kyle O'Reilly, I feel like he does better in NXT. You know, I thought that it, it's kind of bullshit too because I feel like Undisputed Era probably never should have broken up. I feel like this should have been a feud that was booked on the main roster after a long history. So you could have had NXT. You could have had the Undisputed Era go up to the main roster and we get, you know, New Day in Undisputed Era and Usos in Undisputed Era and Street Profits in Undisputed 
undisputed era and we could have had just epic battles on the main roster and then you could break them up when they get involved in like epic feuds you know like god there was just so many creative opportunities for this team and i feel like they cut it a little bit short as great as the matchup was i still feel like they could have went to that i mean it's not i guess out of the case completely but with this breakup i don't see undisputed era ever being the same which is very sickening also i have to mention that their their theme musics are just horribly generic like good god man where is jim johnston when you need this man adam cole and kyle o'reilly uh they need uh i don't know why they changed adam cole's i feel like he could have kept the undisputed era one or like something similar or bring back i don't know bring back his freaking independent theme i i don't know man at the end of the day we have a lot of new things going on around nxt we got new women's champion new nxt champion we got adam cole being defeated there what's next for him i mean i don't know i i don't freaking know my boy finn balor lost we're just gonna have to build bridges and get over it but that is pretty much my reaction to nxt stand and deliver it was what it was i definitely don't think it was my favorite takeover event i felt myself kind of like again i just felt like it was lackluster man it just didn't have the special feel that i really wanted it didn't get me up up out of my chair like i really wanted I, again don't get me wrong there were some epic moments there was some stuff that i'll remember forever it's just i don't know and again it's probably the crowd deal but that pretty much does it for my reaction to nxt guys i hope you guys did enjoy let me know what you thought of nxt down in the comments section below again i hate that i didn't really break everything down and give you my you know everything like i will for mania we'll definitely do a night one mania review we'll do a night two mania review and we'll get all that in but thank you guys for watching subscribe to the channel follow me on instagram and twitter at my damn toys for a random shout out guys it's gonna go to sean 3114 who says the silver mysterio is just an excuse to be lazy and mold the fig in gray and do nothing mattel crossed the damn line with that one and he's referring to that basic uh, uh silver surfer ray mysterio that just it definitely doesn't look good brad i can tell you that it's definitely not uh not the most detailed figure i thought it was one of the more disappointing figures for sure but a huge shout out to sean 3114 for that comment i really appreciate you bro but i'm getting the hell out of here guys thank you so much for watching don't cross the line like uh carrying cross did Ooh, don't carry and cross the line nice you bastard taking Finn's NXT title. You chrome dome bastard. You crossed the line, I've been